Welcome back. Today in the Cheapo realm, yeah, you're not going to believe this. It's an amp probe in the Cheapo arena. I mean, does it get any better than this? Unbelievable. The amp probe AM420. Let's take a look. Who would have thought Ampro would be visiting us in the Cheapo realm? Unbelievable. I still am shaking my head, but it is so true and I'm so happy. Yes, I paid a whopping, get a load of this, $28 Canadian for this little puppy. 28 bucks Canadian, about 24, 23 US dollars. So the Ampro AM420 shipped via Amazon and uh, it was like prime next day unbelievable for the price <laughs> i'm just shaking my head more and more cheapo meters coming on the amazon network so what do you get in the proverbial box well first of all you don't really get a box no it's one of these uh, bubble wrapped uh, enclosures uh, that being said really nice and sturdy no complaints here a meter was certainly well protected have a nice decent looking uh, manual am420 digital multimeter and it's in English, French, and Spanish. So uh, if you speak one of those languages, you're good to go. Nice pictures and overall uh, a really decent read. Um, good stuff, Ampro. And yeah, let's take a look at this baby. But hey, it's not always, hey, it's not always about the feature set though. It's also about the quality. And hey, like for 28 bucks, I mean, really? Really? Yeah, 20 bucks get you an AM probe. And I gotta say, let's hope that that legendary AM probe quality um, is still intact. Now, fit and finish wise, what can I say? It is really nicely done. This is a heavy little guy. Heavy, heavy. Um, I mean, we're not talking like a gold bar or anything heavy, but certainly uh, it's not gonna be flopping around. It has a little bit of girth to it, and I like it. Nice protective red holster, as we can see. And yeah, they negated the kickstand. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of meters lately don't have a kickstand. So, ah, definitely too bad. Taking a look at the back. Yeah, that boot comes off really simple. No worries here. And not much to it. Um, yeah, tiny little meter. And I'll size it up uh, with a couple other meters in a minute here, just so you get a good gauge of the overall size but uh, yeah fit and finish wise very nice and uh certainly no complaints so you probably noticed that those test leads are permanently attached just like my mother-in-law but yeah so well you know it, definitely most of us are not big fans of these permanently attached probe leads but you know what hey if they're attached what is the quality like and you can tell here we have a really nice uh, retaining mechanism so those probes are not getting stressed so over time a lot of times what you're going to have with these built-in test leads is failure right here where they connect but this nice shrouding is definitely going to help in the long term for that wear and tear so yeah nicely done speaking of probes themselves they are a little on the small side sure. taking a closer look at the selector switch starting at the midnight or off position 250 volts AC, amps DC, from 200 microamps to 200 milliamps. Battery tester, 1.5 and 9 volt. Continuity and diode. Resistance, up to 2 mega ohm. Finally, volts DC, 200 millivolts to 250 volts. The top left, we have our single hole. This is strictly a touch hole. That's it. That's all. And at the bottom of the meter, yeah, 250 volts, CAT2 fused at 200 milliamps maximum. You can see the meter is on. There's the display. It is a standard LCD display. Um, the one thing that is sorely missing, yeah, no backlight. Now, because there is no backlight, it is much easier to get that glare. Uh, as you can see with the studio lighting, uh, you wanna make sure it is exactly in your field of view. Now, that being said, um, depending on the angle it is pretty well verbose um but yeah a backlight would have been such a welcome addition too bad once again as well there is no input jacks in their standard spot because we do have those affixed test leads at the bottom starting off with the dc accuracy test yeah spot on no worries for amp probe 2.50 volts 
And for millivolts, hey, spot on once again, 250 millivolts. Oh, it's fluttering now. Call me a liar. Now we're at 249 millivolts, but hey, close enough. Here we have a high powered 1% tolerance, 8.25 ohm resistor. And yeah, 8.5, uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. Ranging speeds as well are a tad on the slow side, sitting at two mega ohm right now. And let's bring it down to one mega ohm. Yeah, so it takes a little while to get there. Now once it settles, it's pretty well spot on accurate, but uh, definitely like to see a little bit more in the speed department. Here we are at 800 and yeah, bring it down to 100K and yeah, so it, it, it does the job, just not the uh, fastest ranging meter. Now once again, this is a non-auto ranging meter. Um, so is what it is. Now this meter does have that uh, 9 volt, 1.5 volt battery testing functionality. For the 1.5 volt range, the load resistance is around 50 ohm. For the 9 volt range, according to the manual, load resistance is around 1 kilo ohm. Basically, it's putting a small load on that battery. Test it out. And it's giving us 8.43 volts. Now, if we try the same test in standard voltage mode, probably not going to see a very large discrepancy. Yeah, really, so not a big difference. So how useful is that feature? Well, you'd be the judge, but uh, eh, not incredibly useful in my mind. Already dialed mode is next. Here we go, starting off with the green LED. And 1.8 volts, forward voltage drop, good stuff. Yellow, barely lit. And once again, we do have that forward voltage display. Over to the red, it is lit. And there's that display. So far, three for three, and the blue is lit but no display. Finally, the white. Wow, you probably can't see that at home. It is actually illuminating, but we're not getting that forward voltage drop. So five out of five for actually lighting up those LEDs. Three to five for showing us voltage drop. Hey, not bad. Output voltage in dialed mode is... Huh? 2.57 volts. Continuity mode is next, my favorite time. Now, of course, we're not gonna be able to test these probe masters because eh, it's hard fixed to the meter, but that's okay. Let's take a look. Stock probes, three, two, one. Wow, it is scratchy, but fast. Holy moly, much better than I was expecting. And you know what? I personally prefer scratchy. Um, yeah, it can, you know, sometimes latched can actually hide a problem, but, uh, oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Now, I wish it was a little bit louder, but you know what? Hey, it works. It works for me. Oh, wasn't expecting that. Oh, that was really good. I'm happy. I like that. Nice and scratchy. Mmm, scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. Seventy-four point seven dBA, the output volume in dialed mode. Ooh, I like it. Not bad for scratchy. Let's check out the AC voltage now. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Should be looking at one hundred and twenty volts and one hundred and twenty-one. Pretty close. Good job. Something else that's really nice with the meter is that selector switch. It has a really nice clackety clack, clickety click. It gets on each range with authority. In terms of the overall size, as you can see, yeah, definitely a small meter compared to the Habit Test. Definitely small, um, fairly close to the Rich Meters 403B, but uh, definitely on the smaller side. Finally, we're going to do a DC high voltage test. Let's see if it can take that 250 volts. The AMP probe, I certainly would expect it. Put the safety goggles on. Three, two, one. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. And look at that. We are actually in excess of 600 volts. And no worries. We have that high voltage indicator on the display. That lightning bolt. Take it up one more time. 
Yeah, 600 volts. No worries there. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay, we have the boot off, and it is teardown time in Ampro Land. Here we go. On the back, we had one, two, three Phillips. Easily removed. And let's take a look. Now, first off, yeah, those screws were just going into plastic, so no threaded inserts here. Too bad. There's the 9-volt housing. So if you have to change that battery, you're going to have to take off the entire backing of the case. Bit of a pain. Bad. No shielding. Honestly, I was expecting to see something here being an AM probe. Uh, well, maybe the price point has something to do with it, but honestly, how much does a little bit of aluminum shielding cost? Since we're in the back, we also have that one standard speaker, and we have that well for the 9-volt battery, which basically sits in there like that. Starting off with the test leads themselves, as I mentioned previously, we have that nice outer housing, which is keeping that uh, positive and negative lead from getting undue stress. So that is gonna help the uh, long-term wear and tear significantly. It is really, really nicely done. Actually, probably longer than it needs to be. Um, excellent quality. Now, true to form, you know you're looking at an amp probe when, well, you got it. Check it out for input protection from a cheapo. Wow, I gotta say, I'm impressed. Now, the fuse itself, ceramic fuse, and it is a slightly unusual 315 milliamp, 250 volt. And that is true to rating because they're only giving us a 200 milliamp, a 250 volt. So, hey, once and for all, we can finally see a fuse that meets its intended rating. Oh, Amprobe, we love you. Also, with the fuse itself, you've got those nice interior clipping mechanisms. So, even if you drop this guy, it ain't going anywhere. Now, we do have a couple of solder blobs here, one here, another one over there, and we're going to take a look shortly on the other side just to see what that's all about. On the middle amp side, we've got one, two PTCs, as well as that uh, ceramic fuse. On the voltage side, we have one nice, big, juicy metal oxide varistor right here, and as well, we have another uh, mob over here, and finally, another PT. Moving up the meter again on the voltage side, we have a nice diode clamp right here. Excellent. And if we take a look down further, yeah, unusually, that's what uh, the 9-volt battery rests on. Not a big fan of that foam. Uh, definitely better than nothing, though. But if we pull it up, okay, we can see that uh, the IC is not to be found. So definitely going to have to take this down a little bit further. Finally, we have a trim pot over here, VR. Uh, I would assume that's probably for the voltage side, so this could be adjustable if that ever needed to be done. Not a big fan of the 9 volt, but uh, it is connected here, and at least it's nice and clean. And we have our fab date here, February 12th, 2015. Okay, let's take it apart even further. All right, going in on the other side, here we are. Take a look at the um, nice, big, thick gauge uh, input leads, really nicely done. And those big solder blobs were for the positive negative uh, lead terminals here. Um, yeah, there we have it. This is the uh, rotary selector switch, nicely greased. There's the uh, two metal balls. That's what that rotary selector is uh, pivoting on. Here are the tracks on the selector switch itself. And we've got six of them all tall. Moving down, we do have a lightly but nicely greased uh, surface area for the selector switch. There's the tracks. Uh, definitely looks to be uh, gold plated and very, very nicely done. Hey, we have another diode on this side as well. And uh, there's a resistor array over here. That's the one hold soft touch button. I gotta say that is really nice quality as well. Um, very, very nicely done. Now, if we take off the display itself oh my goodness yeah it is cobbed so i'm not gonna be able to see what that ic was oh dang it i was really hoping we could get a sneak peek but alas it is not to be here is the uh, contacts for the zebra strip and that is what feeds that uh display all in all some really nice quality you definitely know uh you're in a uh, quality manufacturer's meter here, Amprobe, you have not let us down. 
wow, I can't believe this is in the cheaper realm. Really nice. And let me put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Amprobe AM420. Wow, wow, this is a really well made cheapo. Once again, under 30 bucks. How can you go wrong? Now, yeah, it is severely lacking in some of the ranges department. You know, you can't even do capacitance and that resistance range, oh, so, so useless. But that being said, you know, if voltage is your thing, you are definitely gonna like this little guy. And you know what? The continuity really surprised me. Scratchy, but spot on. And let's not forget that diode mode, hey, it did really, really well. No, for the price and the quality, this is a really good deal. And for protection, probably one of the best I've seen on a cheapo thus far. And I'm not surprised with the Amprobe name. The Amprobe AM420 gets a solid 4 out of 5 stars. Extra website coming. It's going to be part of the channel. Um, it's going to add a little more in-depth analysis and reviews to the meters that I have looked at and will be looking at amongst other things that should be live in about a month or two. So yeah, looking forward to that. Hey, to the next one, keep on testing.